Buongiorno a tutti, benvenuti. Siamo al quinto anno che interni in occasione dell'evento che anche quest'anno abbiamo organizzato in statale eh, con Ital Cementi organizza questi incontri, queste lezioni con architetti eh, internazionali e ovviamente anche italiani. Il titolo dell'evento di quest'anno è Open Borders, l'idea è quello di promuovere una sorta di contaminazione tra le discipline e quindi avere gli studenti del Politecnico e quelli del liceo artistico di Bergamo è già una buona miscela che saluto e introduco allora uh, Mayan Song che è un architetto cinese dello studio MAD, lo studio è fondato nel 2004 e da subito eh, questo studio molto dinamico rivela una, una filosofia di approccio all'architettura che eh, vuole appunto rompere i confini, miscelare le discipline come vedrete anche nella conferenza di oggi, miscelando ovviamente il progetto di architettura all'idea di paesaggio a stimoli che vengono dal mondo dell'arte e dai messaggi multimediali. È una contaminazione positiva, una propensione a integrare diversi punti di vista in una sinergia che porta poi alla, come vedrete, complessità della soluzione del progetto finale. È anche un'architettura, quella di MAD e di Mayan Song, che vuole in qualche modo rappresentare la Cina del nuovo millennio, rapportandosi però allo stesso tempo alla storia millenaria di questo grande paese e della sua civiltà. Gli edifici di MAD, a prescindere dalla scala di intervento, sia che si tratti, come vedrete, di un piccolo, eh, una, una piccola contaminazione positiva, Sia che si tratti di una piccola contaminazione positiva come Lutong Bubble, che è un eh, progetto fatto a Pechino all'interno di un vecchio Utong. Gli Utong sono questi edifici storici che stanno purtroppo scomparendo. Eh, e, e, e MAD appunto riesce a intervenire con eh, grande gentilezza e misura, con un linguaggio contemporaneo, all'interno di questo eh, storico edificio. Un edificio, dicevamo, a scala ridotta eh, del 2010, ma lo stesso atteggiamento poi viene eh, portato alla scala grande, cioè se guardiamo per esempio il City Art Museum di Ordos del 2011 o il più recente grande progetto per la Opera House di Arbin del 2015, l'atteggiamento è sempre quello, cercare un confronto con quello che si trova, con la storia del luogo e con il suo paesaggio. Sono tutti progetti che non si presentano mai come oggetti isolati, ma che vogliono cercare appunto di integrarsi, di trovare un dialogo, un confronto, un legame con il loro intorno, fino a diventare parte del paesaggio. Eh, Nell'ultimo numero di interni ho, ho scritto un articolo su questo progetto, su questa grande opera house di Arbin, chiamandolo Land Architecture, perché proprio è un'architettura che modifica il paesaggio e ne diventa parte. Soprattutto in, eh, in questo progetto che è costruito lungo il fiume eh, si arriva a una dimensione di collina architettonica, la stessa propensione che avremo fra oh, qualche anno, fra un anno, con il progetto in corso a Chicago per il George Lucas Museum. Diciamo che sono edifici senz'altro che creano paesaggi sorprendenti e che in qualche modo uniscono cemento e natura, cioè non sono più cemento e natura dei termini antitetici, ma diventano un programma, un programma per un nuovo eh, intervento compositivo che eh, ricordano eh, appunto anche, torniamo alla disciplina artistica, la pittura tradizionale cinese Shanshui che letteralmente eh, significa pittura di acque e montagne e che è proprio il titolo della conferenza che eh, eh, Mayan Song ci farà oggi e che sottolinea questa 
suo eh, desiderio di essere parte e di confrontarsi con la storia del suo paese. Scusate ma non si spegne. Le Absolute Tower del 2012 eh, in Canada, a Mississauga, sono eh, anche loro in questo senso parte, ricordano eh, questa tradizione pittorica. Sono come delle grandi pietre verticali scolpite e che sembrano quasi levigate dallo scorrere dell'acqua, eh, che ricordano queste magiche montagne del fiume Lin in Cina, nel sud della Cina, che è un fiume bellissimo con queste montagne che sembrano dipinte, e, e che sono appunto un uh, oggetto permanente della pratica pittorica e della tradizione del San Shui. Sono delle torri uh, urbane che creano in realtà un pezzo di natura artificiale abitabile nello skyline di questa città canadese. O per fare un ultimo esempio, lo Sheraton Huzo Spring Resort, che è dello stesso anno, del 2012, che in questo caso come una grande icona ricorda la metafora di una porta urbana rileggendo in fondo la tipologia delle, della Moon Gate, delle, della Porta della Luna, che è una delle tipologie storiche dei giardini cinesi, un arco di passaggio uh, uh, tra paesaggi del giardino. Mayan Sog e Mad rileggono e ascoltano, traducono in chiave di architettura territoriale la lezione di Zadid che qui vogliamo ricordare recentemente scomparsa. Mayan Song, Shansui City. Good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here in Milano. And we did the installation here in, for, the, for the design week. You're all welcome to, to visit. Uh, Meanwhile, I'm, I'm introducing our firm and, uh, and the project to you. The title Shan Shui City combines nature and uh, urban. Uh, most time we think architecture, they're artificial, and nature is the nature. Artificial and nature, they're two sides of our world. They don't combine, you know, but in the traditional sense, in China, Shan Shui means uh, nature is also human's imagination. It's not a real nature. It's uh, in your painting, in your poem, in the traditional gardens. So the world is all artificial because something is physical, something is, is your imagination. So nature and uh, artificial can coexist. Um, talking about, about Beijing, this is a project we did many years ago. First, it was a comp uh, was an exhibition. It's called uh, Beijing 2050. It's uh, we basically you, you see this silver object uh, inserted into the old uh, neighborhood. What's inside is a toilet, because you know all these old house they don't have a toilet, so. My, my idea was you know, just to provide them the functions they need, but they look nothing like the traditional buildings. And then we, we, we show this model, and one, one guy, uh, he saw this model, he liked it very much, and then we, uh, we decided to build one before uh, year 2050. So the proposal was for the future, but when people uh, can, can, you know, can understand what's happening, uh, the future will be uh, realized. So there's no utopia, right? Because all the so-called utopia, it's about a, a solution of, a, of a, um, a modern time. It's, it's a solution of the current challenges. So once we try to solve this, the solution will look different and new. So that's uh, how the futuristic come from. So this, this is a real photo we, we, uh, we realized. Th you see this organic uh, building? Uh, it's very small and uh, in, the, in the corner of a, a courtyard. 
there's a toilet inside, and there's a staircase lead you up to the roof. So you can take the stair up. So that's inside, and uh, nature light inside the bubble. So the the shape is uh, very strange, and uh, and uh, it reflects the surroundings. So all the reality being reflected into this object and uh, twisted. So you will see the you will see another reality, a second reality through the object, and and the volume will disappear because the reflection. So this is uh, when you have the object in the courtyard. And from here, uh, you look at the courtyard, there's a nothing uh, because the bubble, the object, is on the corner and the, and the surface um, reflect the surrounding, so the object disappears. Um, what's important for, for this house is the courtyard, which is the emptiness. That's something very special in, in, in China that all the gardens, all the traditional architecture wasn't about the building object. It was about environment or gardens, about experience. Uh, so this courtyard is, uh, is, was like a key to this uh, um, residence where you have a tree, you have a bird, and you have life. So, but now when we talk about architecture, it's often about object. It's about a structure, function, uh, it's about a shape, but it's often about uh, the building itself, not the overall uh, context. So I think, uh, um, so it, from this photo you can see the difference. Uh, the city beyond, which is modern architecture, towers, big blocks, but in the traditional uh, neighborhood, you see the voids, trees, and uh, you know the um, the courtyards. This uh, is uh, our cities. Um, two photograph. Um, the one on the left uh, was New York City, Manhattan. The one on the right is uh, one of the Chinese cities under construction. There are many cities like this being built. Uh, you know, they look same um, um, all uh, everywhere uh, around the country, and uh, the typology of this kind of city is very old. You know, it's uh, it's uh, from the modern time, post-industrial time, from North America, and uh, full of towers. Um, and uh, we did something in North America uh, in 2006. That was a uh, when we win the competition, and 2012, we finished these two towers in Canada. Uh, these two, obvious, uh, obviously, they're, they look different from the surrounding. You know, you see all the boxes uh, around, the, uh, around our site, but uh, we have uh, two twisted uh, skyscrapers. They're all residential towers. Uh, the one on the left was the competition. Uh, we won the competition, and uh, they call this building Marilyn Monroe Tower because uh, the curvature of the building. Uh, but I think it's funny when you when you look at this photo, all the towers around us they're like a man, right? They're like they're like a square, very serious. Um, but our tower look like a female because the curvature, the beauty of it. But yeah, the idea was we try to challenge the modern city, uh, modern architecture that only care about the efficiency, the, you know, the strength, the symbolic uh, um, uh, image of those towers showing the capitalism and, and the power. But in our design, we try to bring in the horizontal um, balconies the, the, the movement, you know, the, the tower look like uh, um, it, uh, it's coming from the nature, you know, that the wind can shape the towers uh, and so on. So it, it nothing uh, like the, uh, the modern um, industrial 
uh, buildings. Inside the building, there's a, it's quite a conventional uh, uh, structure. There's a core in the middle, and, and the units, they all have a large windows and the big balconies around them. And uh, when they announced the first one, uh, the, which is Marilyn Monroe Tower, and then uh, they all like it, and then we build a second one. So there are, finally, there are two towers, and uh, you can see the, the, the relationship, because two towers look different, and uh, they're not copying uh, one and, the, and, the, and, the, and another. So um, there is a conversation in between these two towers. When you look down from the top, you see because of the twist of the floor plan, all these balconies becomes to, um, become uh, exposed, exposed to the sunlight. So you have a more, um, um, they're, they're like a terraces. Uh, you have a more sunlight go into your units. So those are, from different angle, you look at this twin tower, there's uh, those lines start to talk to each other and um, uh, very different uh, um, relationship very um, in between these two. This uh, a drawing from local uh, children, you know, they, they can see the two towers are different. I mean, but, but in our modern cities, many buildings are very same, right? very like box. This is from their local newspaper. They were making fun of the building. And a lot of pictures on the social media. And, you know, people like to uh, uh, interact with this kind of architecture. They were, uh, I thought that was, uh, when we designed the building, it was purely architecture statement that we are um, against modern uh, typology. But in, in fact, people in, live in the modern cities, they are looking for a new kind of architecture. They're tired of uh, uh, you know, the boxes. Um, this is another project we built in, in China um, where you can find very beautiful lake and a mountain. And we have to, because of population, a lot of people move to this area. We have to build uh, high-density uh, buildings around here. Um, but you can see here, we build a group of buildings. It's like a new type of a village. It's not a two high-rise or three high-rise. But we, we build uh, 11 smaller buildings. Uh, and they all uh, blend into the mountain hills. This is the top view. Uh, so we have a contour lines, and all this building look like uh, they extend from the existing land and become the part of, become part of the um, landscape. So this is a model of the of the design. So you see a lot of uh, terraces, horizontal, big big balconies. Um, this is a section. You see how they sit on the existing hill and extend to the hilltop. So the part of the building look like uh, uh, the mountain. Here the rendering, you see the big, big uh, terraces uh, facing the lake. And the tea field on the, on the side, there's a tea field and, uh, and the terraces uh, become coexist. Here's a construction. You see the, the building shape, the profile, blend into the mountains. So from the distance, you, you, you guess, you know, this is a, um, just the landscape. From the sky, you see the group of buildings is quite a dense. There's a lot of people live here. But at the same time, you know, you, you have a large structure, large buildings, but you work with the landscape. Uh, I mean, I, th this is a ma uh, the, the main challenge for me uh, because when you um, build uh, one story, two story building like traditional buildings, it's very easy because you know, when you plant a tree, the tree is bigger than your house. It's very easy to coexist. But when you have to build a larger building, um, that's a challenge. 
so a lot of big terraces, and all these lines, all these uh, uh, floor floor lines, they they have to work with uh, the site, also the you know the trees, the slope of the of the ground, and uh, each line is different. Uh, this is another one, you know, this is quite uh, obvious, it looks like a mountain, but uh, it's actually one of my sketch. I, I went to the site, I see an ocean, and I know there's, a, there's a very strange mountains in this area, but there's a, no mountain on the site. So I was thinking maybe I sh we should have a mountain here, so I sketched a mountain, and I went back to my office, I scanned this sketch into the computer, and then we draw this. We trace this line, hand drawing into uh, AutoCAD. We we make the building. It's nothing like a digital or at all. Uh, it's a it's a hand sketch. Um, that's why this uh, this profile is uh, is uh, very strange, and uh, some people even think this is ugly. But uh, but for me, it's a very very uh, interesting because it's captured the uh, the first. Uh, instinct uh, of the designer when you experience the landscape. And uh, when we turn this into a large-scale building, oh, sorry, uh, you have a lot of uh, <coughs> um, uh, skylines, and we can put a lot of uh, terraces on the top. And uh, people think, you know, this is a large building, but uh, it's also a, a landscape. This is a section of the building. You see the, the ocean, the beach on the right, and then this is the, uh, the building as a, almost like a wall. And we punch big holes on the wall so we can allow the wind, the sun, go through the building. And the ground level is lifted, you see, so, so people can walk through the building on the ground level. By pushing all this program, which is huge, like 4,000 families, live in this neighborhood. We push all these people into one building so we can free up a lot of space in front, which, is, uh, which become the public park, like, like this. So <clears throat> you can see the green area. They're, they're like a, a, a park open to the public. It's very linear, narrow site. <clears throat> And, and the photo on the right, you see uh, you know, the view from the top. You see a lot of terraces um, on the building. And those big holes, they're like uh, very thin structure uh, concrete. There is no truss, no anything, because the shape of the, of the hole is like egg. It supports itself. And on the rooftop, there is a tennis court, you know, all this uh, public usage. Uh, function on the top, on the bottom. So the building is uh, is uh, is like a, not like a luxury house. It's like a middle class. Like people, a lot of people live together, collective housing. But uh, uh, the building brings identity to the community. Here's a museum we we built. Uh, you can see uh, this like a. A building in the desert, right? Because you don't see tree, flower, uh, you don't see green even. Um, that's another meaning of shan shui uh, in my topic. Shan shui means nature, means mountain and water, but it also means the emotion towards nature. It doesn't have to be green, because now um, we, we talk about the green building, sustainable architecture is often about technology, often about you insert nature element into the buildings. But for me, it's like when you look at the desert, when you like, uh, look at the ocean, when you look at uh, one flower, one rock, you have an emotion. That's the real thing between nature and, and human. I think that's more important than we look at the nature as a physical element. So here is a museum, like a metal museum, landed on the, on the desert. Um, 
Inside the museum, we have a natural light, we have a wood shell, and, uh, <coughs> and uh, there's, a, uh, there's a, a huge um, canyon space like this. This is a, like a lobby of the, of the building um, where you have a lot of uh, natural light, and you can see those bridges. They're connecting all the galleries on, on both sides, so people can you know, follow this. Uh, exhibition circulation through the building, and those are uh, you know see this big window. That's uh, where we cut the volume and bring in the nature light. A lot of uh, holes and black and white in this building because I was trying to you know make I like holes like they're like uh, caves like uh, you know when b before human have a and it's before the civilization, we live in the cave. Those space are very old, desert, desert landscape is very old. Um, but when we make those landscape uh, abstract, they look so futuristic. Uh, so people say there's a future, but uh, it's nothing future. It's just an abstraction of, uh, of old landscape. And uh, when you have um, the past and the future uh, in, in front of you and the nothing familiar, there's no modern element in front of you, you feel lost, right? You, you don't see anything familiar, then there's a time, time gap in front of you. Uh, I, think, I think that's important for, uh, for a human to have imagination. That's important for a museum. Um, here's the Oprah House. Uh, we just completed last year uh, in a northern city of China. It's, uh, you see the beautiful landscape. It's actually a, a huge uh, river goes through the city. And uh, there is a wetland here uh, by the lake. And we were building an Oprah House inside the, this wetland. So it's important to to make this building blend into the landscape. So you see the, the curvatures, the, 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 the profile, the slope. So we tend to make the building like a part of the, the snow landscape. Here's the top view. You see the um, two opera house. Uh, there's a one op large opera house, one small theater. Um, they, they shared one uh, lobby in between. And this, this tail, you know, it's like a, a, a ramp and connect the building to a plaza. So people can, uh, can walk, can walk uh, along here. This is like a ticketing office. So people can walk along here and then eventually uh, walk onto the building. So the building is like a hill, but you can approach the building and climb the building from the exterior. So those lines, actually, they're like a ramps. They're not only the cut, they're the ramps. You can walk. Uh, you, can, uh, you can walk along this and uh, eventually arrive the, the rooftop. There is an amphitheater on the rooftop that's open to the public. So you see the, the big windows, the, the roof, the roof windows. We like nature light. Um, it's a plaza. You see the, the, those uh, continued uh, lines uh, that bring people onto the building. This is the main entrance. <coughs> those are roof uh, structure, also the, where the lights come from. The building is a metal um, because the, the strength, the, you know, the temperature change uh, in, in the place. It um, could be Minus, uh, minus 40 degrees in the winter, in the, in the evening. It's super cold. And during the summer, it could be 30 degrees. So there's a huge uh, temperature change. This is a, <coughs> the skin of the building. It's all 3D uh, metal. And sometimes you see the bubbles. You know, those are like, uh, you make metal building more life, look like uh, skin. 
of an animal or something. So this building, you see, there's a no front, no back, no side. So it's a, you, can, you can look at the building or approach the building from all the directions. Um, and it's important for us to, to make the building feel um, low, uh, at least the entries, entrance or you know, the way you, you can approach the building. There's no big facade in front of you. So, so the building feels friendly and approachable. So here's a ramp. You can see, you can walk up. Those are cities beyond. <clears throat> Inside the building, uh, the white wall, they're like uh, the, the, uh, the shell of the building, the, the exterior wall you see from outside. And this wall protect an uh, uh, object, which is the auditorium inside uh, the building. The wood is, is the auditorium. So there's a lot of uh, natural light. When you are in this space, you feel you're still outdoor, because the light from the top, the light from the, the side. And you can, uh, you can also look at the park around you. The wood is from local. But we, we uh, make the wood uh, strips, uh, so you can uh, easily make the, the shape of the, of the, uh, the wall. <clears throat> so there are two stairs around the, on the two sides of the auditorium lead you to, to all the levels. But we sculptured the stair, so this uh, uh, circulation space become very dramatic. It's like uh, uh, you know, when people see each other, it's like uh, you're on the stage. That's another idea for this opera house, that uh, when before people start a show, they already feel themselves are performers. You know, they feel people are looking at them, and they're being observed by other people. So there's, a, you know, they can, uh, they, they can start the, the drama mode uh, before, the, before the real drama starts. Inside the opera uh, is also wood, and it's all organic. So you almost visualize the sound, the, you know, how this acoustic uh, perform in the space. This is the first show. A lot of people go there. You see the, the seating is like a, a cave again. So each seating area is, uh, is uh, divided. So there's, uh, you, can, you, know, you feel that you're, you're sitting in one area, but you can look at other people. This is a stage. <clears throat> well, actually, from here, you can see the, the back wall uh, you see that light object, that's a third level seating. Behind that, there's a natural light coming from exterior. That's very rare in opera house. You don't, in opera house, often it's a dark space, but here we have a natural light, because I think it's important for people to realize they're in the park, in the nature, not in the you know, basement. Uh, this uh, the lobby go uh, lead you uh, to the lower level, which is, which is a car park, and um, this is another lobby for the small theater. This is all white. You see the the lights, the nature lights moving, uh, and then shadow moves. So you can sen you have a sense of a uh, time, and here's the entrance to the small theater, the stairs, the public space. In, inside the small theater, it's, uh, we have also nature light. So the, the backdrop of the stage can be open to the outside. The wall on the two sides is a concrete, um, but you see the water waves on the, on the wall. This wall can reflect the sound, but also you feel uh, this is like water or... or 
or a sound wave from exterior. So we can want, we want to connect the inside and outside. And this is another one uh, we're, we're designing. Uh, we'll start construction later this year. Uh, it's a music hall next to a stadium. It's very uh, strange because stadium is very loud and noisy and the music hall is super, has to, has to be very quiet. But anyway, uh, we made uh, this one, um, uh, this music hall, like very, uh, uh, very much about internal space. So from outside, you don't see much. It's a translucent glass material to allow the, the, the nature light go in. And during the evening, this will glow. You will see, you know, there's a, a, a public activity inside. So inside it, you, you, see, uh, you see a wood shell, and uh, there's a lobby space. There's a lot of natural light from outside. Once you go into the, uh, the, the auditorium, uh, we have uh, we have a all white uh, projection wall, right? Because traditional uh, concert hall is all wood, which is uh, quite uh, good acoustically. But uh, for me, it's important to um, to uh, to combine all the experience. Uh, when you listen, uh, when you listen to a music, so we want to create uh, experience not in the city, but could be anywhere. Could be outdoor. Could be you know uh, in the mountain or in the another location. So the projection will make a new space uh, when you listen to a music. <clears throat> uh, and uh, this is uh, Hollywood. <laughs> We're we're uh, building a house there. It's not house. It's a uh, it's a mixed use building. You see this in California in Beverly Hills. There's some uh, building very small, and they are built on the hill. I think it's quite uh, natural. It's a it's only, uh, the nature element, artificial element coexist, and uh, those. Houses are very strange. There, you only see very small part of it. It's, uh, uh, and behind the green wall, so we did a building look like this. It's it's a, it's a small. You know, we 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 don't only do large project. This this building is a five floor. Ground level is commercial, and second and third floor are uh, condominium. And uh, we build a small house on the top. So this like we, we, we build a hill, we build a mountain, and then we build a house on the mountain. And then we plant a lot of trees on the, on the mountain. So this five floor building suddenly changed the scale. This is uh, uh, the side plan, it's very small, and there's a courtyard in the middle. And inside, uh, we have uh, all these units uh, facing each other. Uh, their their kitchen, their dining, and the living room. They can all look at each other. So we can make the sense of community, which which is very rare in Beverly Hills. People like to be. Uh, I didn't touch anything. It. You know, it's very rare in Beverly Hill where people like privacy, but here we want uh, to, to have the public a community sense for this space. <laughs> Here's a model. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, look, uh, realize the scale of this this model, but the model is big. Uh, it's representing a large development <clears throat> where, very fun. But anyway, you can, you can see the picture, right? Uh, th this, is a, this is a model, like real, real big, and we put a 
small trees in the model. You know, so so it feels like a, a live model. There is a real tree, and, uh, and then the human. So we we're thinking to make uh, uh, a model of this project. Uh, it's a it's a project under construction. It's huge development uh, with uh, thirteen uh, towers, um, hotels, offices, residential and also a commercials. So you see we treat all the big building as a, as a background because the white louvers, right? you, don't, you don't see much. It's very simple uh, vertical lines. Those lines, they're glass, uh, uh, sun shading system. It's like a louvers, white louvers made by glass. Behind those glasses, it's uh, all the different different function. So those large buildings become the boundary, also become the background of, the, of this valley. Inside the valley, uh, we have uh, small buildings. So we, f we fill in a lot of uh, small uh, two-story, three-story buildings, like a village. Uh, you, see, you see those uh, smaller scale. So we want to um, make small scale in the large development. Uh, so inside here, you have a urban street. You have uh, some green mountain, which is that green mountain in the middle is like a four floor, and some smaller villages and the pedestrian uh, street. So, so the human, uh, we try to find uh, uh, the scale between the human scale and the large building, because it's often when you look at the large building, uh, there's a plaza in or empty space in front of this building. So you feel yourself is very small and the building is so grand. Uh, so here we try to uh, change the scale. So people will experience uh, the smaller scale or landscape around, around them. And they, they will um, no, not notice the large structure from close but of course, uh, um, you will you will uh, visual those large large building from distance. These are construction photos of the site. You see, you see the cities around. So I hope in the end uh, we can we can build a, um, a new type of landscape here. So we why we try to treat the large building as a landscape. This is another study uh, in Beijing. It, it is a model again. We have a glass, and we have a water. We have a real uh, plant in this model. The building look uh, very much like uh, sliding rocks. It uh, has a curb lines like a one layer, two layer, three layer, and you can see the surrounding there. Um, uh, very tall buildings, um, but uh, you see uh, Ram Kuha's building in Beijing. Um, um, it's a different from the vertical uh, towers, but uh, I think it's very similar. It's very strong and trying to be powerful. Um, but in our case, we want to uh, make our building close, uh, looks close to the nature. So actually the site is next to a park. So we want to make it look like a part of the landscape. <clears throat> Here's a painting uh, that an artist did. He put our building inside uh, uh, this painting and look uh, quite nice, actually. The building from the other side uh, look quite uh, futuristic. Again, it look like um, um, uh, black, uh, glass and all curved, and you see those uh, lines, vertical lines. They're actually column in, uh, behind. Uh, along each column, there is a uh, air tunnel uh, inside. So, so the glass doesn't open, but the the air can go through all the lines, bring the 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 air from the bottom and and release on the top of the building. So there is a uh, air circulation. 
uh, in those lines, and every floor you can open a window towards the, this this line, so you can get uh, fresh air into into the office. And behind the two tower, there is a garden. Uh, again, we put a smaller scale buildings close and uh, to try to create this uh, more intimate space for for people. So people can you know go into this area. They f they feel this is uh, quite a nice to stay. And this is a lobby. There's a, a office lobby in between two towers uh, where we also have a natural light and uh, also a waterfall uh, inside the lobby. So sound is uh, interesting. You know, when you have a water flow, uh, the sound in the lobby also give you a sense of uh, nature. Here's a, another lobby on the, on the rooftop. And the building is sit into a water pond um, that the water will cool, the, will, will, uh, cool down the air before the air go into the air tunnel. Those are construction photos. So you can see the, the curved, all the glass are curved and in and curved in. And those are metal pieces or um, uh, air, air tunnels inside. So you can see the building profile. It's quite different from the uh, other, other buildings. From south, you see the, all the, every piece of glass start to curve in and to, to, you know, to show the, the structure column in front of it. This is one corner of the building. So the, all the glass is uh, um, many, many unique pieces for glass, and the pr um, production, the technique is very advanced to make all the curved glass and the curve in. It's quite different from uh, curved out. <clears throat> um, here's a, the, the museum we're designing in Chicago. Um, uh, um, supposed to start construction uh, later this year. Um, it looks like a volcano, right? It's like a white mountain. But we all know Chicago, it's a, it's a modern city. Uh, you, see, you have a Miss Van der Rohe, you have a, a Frank Lloyd Wright, all these modern figures, and those masterpieces in the, in the city. Uh, but uh, what's the future? For, for for our architecture, I think, I think if modern city was about um, capitalism and the power, sometime technology, uh, and the, I think future city should be about nature and and human. Uh, so uh, w things we're doing a building in the park, uh, in front of water, I think. Instead of uh, making object, uh, I would rather uh, design um, um, something blend into the park. So you see, this uh, there's a plaza um, that connects all the um, land around the around the site, and the building look like uh, just continue from the part of the floor. Um, so. Um, you feel you're entering um, a new kind of uh, landscape. And because a museum um, has a lot of uh, um, uh, multimedia or, uh, uh, or exhibition that doesn't require nature light, so it's quite a solid. But on the top, uh, you see a glass part, also a, a metal ring. Uh, that is actually a observation deck that open to the public. People can uh, see it uh, from the below, and people will be cur curious uh, what's up there, and they want to go in inside. What's inside? It's uh, um, because uh, the the shape of the building, the lower level is quite large. Um, and uh, we have uh, three theaters inside the building and one 
uh, one library there, and there's three theaters, and this part is a museum. Here's the main entrance, and、uh, we have a huge dome、uh, inside the, in the center of the museum,、uh, four floor high. It's like a, it's like a, a very traditional, like a temple space. But、um, again, it's、uh, it look、um, futuristic. Because again, we try to bring in these two elements、uh, together. That you know, element from the past, the typology of the space from the past, from the history. But it looks different. And then we bring in the the ramp、uh, outside the dome. You can you can walk on the ramp、uh, to all the exhibition levels. Until you reach the rooftop. So from here, you can see the location. You can see the conversation.、Uh, that、uh, that's a, a man-made. That's a, like、uh, you know during the modern time. I think which is the the greatest、uh, time.、Uh, you know, we build the the whole world, and uh,、um, uh, but when we look at that. We have to think: What's the future?、Uh, what's the next?、Uh, if we、uh, go to the nature, go to the water, we don't want to make another box there. I think、um, we almost、uh, trying to not making a building. We want to build experience, the continuous experience from exterior to interior. From you know the whole thing is about、uh, is about the、uh, experience of the nature. I think uh,、um, I, I think uh,、um, visually we see、uh, geometry, we see the space, we see、uh, we sometimes we even see style. You know, you see you, you use the curve lines, we use the street lines. But for me, it's not important. It's a, I think architecture is about the experience. And、uh, whether this experience uh, about about uh,、um, about uh,、um, function or about uh,、um, the nature or about、uh, yourself, that's important to me.、Um, I, I hope I hope uh, um, um, this museum can be a, a good、uh, addition to. To this city, uh, uh, you know, when you look at the when you look at the whole history from、uh, from the from the distance, from the future.、Um, thank you very much.、Uh. Mi sembra che questa lezione, questa diciamo speech che che, che Mayan Song ci ha offerto sia spunto per varie riflessioni. Provo a sintetizzarne due che mi sembrano、eh, importanti che possono magari stimolare qualche domanda. Abbiamo qualche minuto a disposizione se ce n'è bisogno. Allora la prima osservazione che che posso fare è che sia alla grande che alla piccola scala, come dicevo prima, l'atteggiamento di ricerca progettuale di, di Mayan Song è quello di scardinare il sistema canonico dell'architettura che vede fronti principali, fronti secondari e copertura, e di fare di questi una, una grande sintesi complessiva che converge poi sempre, come abbiamo visto, in una dimensione paesaggistica, a volte scultorea. Uh, Mayan Song per descrivere i suoi edifici ha usato、uh, dei termini come esperienza, come paesaggio, poche volte come architettura e non è un caso perché è una architettura che si descrive con altri termini. E il secondo punto importante、eh, è quello appunto del rapporto con la natura. È un rapporto ricercato in ogni progetto che non è mai mimetico. E、non si tratta di coprire con il verde gli edifici e nelle poche volte che、eh, Mayan Song prova a usare questo termine lo fa come nel progetto che abbiamo visto di Hollywood 
solo per costruire ancora un paesaggio, cioè una collina artificiale che sostiene delle case, quindi ancora una forma paesaggistica. Sono eh, sempre forme di nuovo paesaggio. Montagne, abbiamo visto il concetto di montagna, montagne architettoniche che contengono architetture minori, che contengono quasi delle metafore di villaggi in città che, come abbiamo visto, sono segnate da grandi palazzi anonimi, da grandi architetture, diciamo, di, di, di forma tradizionale e che i eh, progetti di MAD cercano in qualche modo di riattivare dal punto di vista paesaggistica ma anche, come ci raccontava, di una fruizione diversa di questi spazi. Thank you, Mad. Very good. Bene, ringrazio molto Mayan Song dello studio Mad che ci ha portato degli stimoli molto interessanti. Vi do appuntamento allora a venerdì alle 10.30 con Alfonso Femia dei 5 più 1. Grazie.